for scriptures today. We have our first reading from Psalm number 80. The book of Psalms easily found just about in the center of your Bible. We're going to read from Psalm number 80, and I will start with verse 7. Psalm 80, verse 7. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You did bring a vine out of Egypt, and you drove out the nations to plant it, and you cleared the ground for it, and it took deep root, and it filled the land, and the mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way, they pull its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it and all that move in the field feed upon it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see and have regard for this vine, the stock which your right hand has planted. They burned it with fire, they've cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. But let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Now we'll turn just a little ways over to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah the prophet. And on this same Theme, the same image of the, the vine of God's grace, the vine that is the pure fruit of our faith. I will uh, read to you from Isaiah, verses 1 through 7. Let me sing for my beloved a song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He digged it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. Built a watchtower in the midst of it. Hewed out a wine vat in it and looked for it to yield grapes. But it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield, yield grapes, it yielded wild grapes. Now I'll tell you what I'll do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste, and it shall not be pruned or hoed. And briars and thorns shall grow up, and I will command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, and behold, bloodshed, for righteousness, and behold, a cry. So in the Old Testament, you have a conflict between the vineyard, the, the, the fruit of pure faith that the prophets were calling for that purity of faith, and the encounter of that inner faith against the outer world of thorns and thistles and conflict between the faith within and the world without. And this conflict was resolved by Jesus Christ. And I'll read you what Jesus said about 
that conflict. We'll turn over to John. Turn to John chapter 15. And in John 15, I will read to you verses 1 through 5. John 15, 1 to 5. And these are the words of Jesus. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Well, we've, uh, I, I made it through the summer without doing very much in the yard. You know, it was too hot. And this last week was the week to get it cleaned up. And uh, we, we actually hired a fellow to come and do a little bit of work for us. You've got to realize how hard that is for me to do. You know? <laughs> what, what do you mean you want me to pay you? you know? <laughs> but we, we hired a fellow to do some yard work. Kathy got out there and worked really hard. I did what I could. And we cleaned the vines off the house, right? I would bet every one of you has to deal with the vines that eat the house, right? And if you don't cut them down, they will do just that, right? So I brought you an example here, and I'll get it out of my little bag here. This is one of the friendlier vines. <laughs> I brought it along. Um, do, now, does anybody know what this is? We got any botanists among us? I, 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 it, 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 looks like, it looks like some kind of ivy. It's not poison ivy. <laughs> you know, but, but think for a minute about all those trouble vines, right? The one I really wanted to bring <coughs> is the one with all the thorns. You know, the one that, that, that grows all over the place and you reach out, if you reach out by mistake and grab it and it sticks in your fingers, right? You know, I, I wanted to bring that, but I realized that if I did, all that would happen is it'd be stuck to me in the middle of the service and that wouldn't be any good at all. Uh, but you know uh, the way we have to deal with the vines. Now, think, if you would, about the nice, old, scuppernong vine. Does, do any of you have a scuppernong arbor in your yard? I'm not seeing any hands. You know, we used to, you know, uh, my, my, my grandfather had one, right? And it, it would grow the nicest grapes. The, remember the old scuppernong. That is a North Carolina <laughs> grape. And it has a really thick skin, but the inside of it is just so good. Now, in the terms of the Bible, in Bible language, the, 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 the story and the lesson of the vine is about, is about our faith and the good vine and the fruit of the vine, that is our pure faith. What that is, that, that is about 
our faith, and I mean our deepest faith, I mean the faith we hold in the very center of our being, and that faith that, that illuminates us and guides us and empowers us in the worst and most difficult moments of our lives, that core inner faith, that is the pure fruit of the vine of the Lord. Now, the problem is all the other vines, right? All, all the, the other vines, the, the, the poison ivy and, the, and even the English ivy. I don't know if you got any of that English ivy growing in your yard. That stuff will eat your house. It'll eat your house in a flash. I, I went to a college in what they called the Ivy League because some fool planted English ivy on the buildings 200 years ago at an eighth old school. <laughs> You, you know, it, 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 there, there's all kinds of other things out there that conflict with that pure inward faith that we would hold. And that's what this lesson of the vine is all about. The way our inward faith the deepest set of beliefs that we hold comes into conflict with everything that's out there. Because you see here, especially in, in, in the life of the church, in this sanctuary on a beautiful Sunday morning, we, we can hold that faith <coughs> strong in our hearts and we know, you know just what I'm talking about, that, that the vine of the Lord is that core, inward, deep faith that you hold. But then as soon as we go out there, we go out there into a mess. <coughs> and, and, and if it's not a mess in our, in our personal life or our family life or our, 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 our work life or our health or something like that, <laughs> all you gotta do is turn on the TV. And, and I gotta say, this week, I, I was so sad to see what happened there in Israel. Uh, when, I, when I turned on, looked at the news yesterday morning, what, what a sorrow there, at it again, doing it again. And, and if you really look at that conflict and its causes and its effect and everything else, the only thing that's coming out of it is going to be to raise up another generation that'll do the same thing. It, it, it's just a constant, tragic disconnect. And, 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 and it's, it's all over. You, you find it in so many places in so many ways. From a biblical perspective, the way to understand it is to look at the lesson of the vine and how we are when we encounter that which is contrary to our faith. So we start off in, in Psalm number 80, and Psalm 80, um, it begins, I, I like to start off with verse, verse 8, which looks back to the origins of the faith. You brought a vine out of Egypt. The vine started growing in Egypt. And, and the vine was brought out of Egypt first by Abraham. Abraham, who, who, who found this teaching and brought it forth out of Egypt, and that that teaching is that God is one, that there is one God who is the creator and the Lord of heaven and earth, and that we can live in covenant with that God. We can have a covenant of agreement and relationship with God, and that the actions we take on earth are accountable to God, that we are in relationship with God and accountable to God. And that was the vine that Abraham brought from Egypt. And that vine 
got nurtured and, and, and it grew again coming out of Egypt with Moses. Because Moses also, coming out of Egypt, he brought a much more detailed set of instructions about how to live, commandments of the law, which if followed would bring that inward assurance of the grace and mercy of God, that we would, we would have that connection with God through the Torah, through the teachings of Moses. But as the people took hold in the promised land, they had to deal with their neighbors, and as they dealt with their neighbors, they dealt with another kind of vine that wasn't as fruitful or that was harmful to them. And this developed into all kinds of conflict and all kinds of anger and all kinds of upset as they dealt with it. So in Psalm number 80, um, you, you did bring a vine out of Egypt and you drove out the nations to plant it. And it talks about how God nurtured this vine in the land of Israel, bringing forth our faith. And, and the, the, there is the, this complaint, verse 12. Why have you broken down its walls? It, 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 the vineyard doesn't have a wall anymore. The, 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 the wall of the vineyard has been broken down. And, 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 and all who pass along can, can just pick the fruit. The boar from the forest ravages the vine. That's verse 13. The boar from the forest ravages the vine. And all that move in the field feed on it. So, so here is our pure faith. Here is, is the, that, that core idea of the grace of God and the love of God. That's the vine, and it's growing out there. But the Gentiles, the enemies, them, they just pick it and eat it. Something's going on here. The vine is no longer contained the way we would want it to be. And that did bring all kinds of anger. And Isaiah really, really, really speaks to that. You know, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. You know, because, because he's saying that God had nurtured this vineyard there in Jerusalem, in Israel, and now it's all fallen apart. This is what Isaiah experienced. That the, the wall is broken down and it's trampled down. And, and it says this, I will make it a waste and it shall not be pruned or hoed. Briars and thorns shall grow up. That's Isaiah 5, verse 6. And I tell you, living each day, I, I would underline those words. Briars and thorns will grow up. That is the truth. Briars and thorns will grow up. So here we are wanting that, that, that vine of, of precious faith in our own hearts. But what do we get? Briars and thorns. That is so true. That's so much a part of our lived experience. That's the way things go. Isaiah says this. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. The men of Judah are his pleasant planting. Now, the house of Israel, for us in our faith, we see the house of Israel as all the people of faith, as all the people who hold on to that vine that came from Abraham, that vine that came from Moses, that vine that brings us that core of faith. Jesus was the one who brought it all together, and he brought it all together right here in John chapter 15. Because Jesus says, I am the true vine, and 
my father is the vine dresser. Now, anytime you see I am, always circle that because that connects you right to the very name of the very essence of God. God says I am is who I am. Jesus says I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. So this vine that, that was so carefully cultivated in Israel has now spread all over the world, bearing its fruit, bringing the fruit of grace and faith to all these people. And it's very hard for us to find our way through the tangled trouble of the world today. But every branch of mine, this, this is what Jesus says, every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away. So the fruitless vine will be gone. It will be taken away. Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. What a reminder that is. As faithful and careful that we live our lives we get out there in that tangled mess every, you know, we get snipped, pruned. He prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean. See, this is the truth. You are made clean by the words I've spoken to you. That's what Jesus says. See, you're forgiven of your sins. You're forgiven of all the mistakes that were made. You're forgiven of all the burden of imperfection. Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. So you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ in your heart. And by the power of that, you're able to simply rise above all this mess and conflict and trouble and tribulation and all that happens out there. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. He repeats, I am the vine. And then he says this, you are the branches. So you are the vine too. You see, you are the one who has that fruitfulness, that faith, that ability to shine through the trouble, to be faithful through the trouble. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And so we're going to take our faith today. We've had a moment to come to, to really realize how good God is in our hearts strength of faith. Take that strength of faith and take it right out there into that tangled mess of thorns and briars and injustices and all the troubles that are out there. Carry the faith with you. Bear the fruit that is the grace of God. Amen. And now let's remind ourselves of our faith. Let's, let's recite these words of the Apostles' Creed. If you're, if you're comfortable.